Hi, artist friends. Welcome to Kitchen Counter Abstract. In today's episode, I am showing you how I finish a painting. Don't panic. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> I just got this really big five inch brush and I haven't really had a chance to use it, but it'll be downstairs on the bigger canvases. I am gonna try to get inspired by looking at some of my Pinterest. I love Heather Ch Chantos or Contos. Her stuff is so neat, look at that. I really like Yvonne Robert as well. Her stuff is really nice. So I have some acrylic paints. I have this bucket of pens that I, and pencils that I like to keep all together now. I have my chalks, water-soluble crayons, Caran d'Ache, and a bunch of brushes, and let's get started. I was watching a Nicholas Wilton YouTube video of him painting a really big painting and it's fun to watch him. He uses a lot of paint and I just don't have that much paint up here to go crazy like that. But I'm also working on a smaller piece, so. This is transferring from saran wrap. Let me switch to the other piece. I'll rotate between these two. Sometimes I like to use a color that is a little shocking, that doesn't seem to fit um, because it adds a little bit of interest. I can always cover it up later, but just to find, and I think it looks really nice, that mint green on top of the, the burnt sienna color there. I think it's really interesting. When I want to make a color not so pure and bright and saturated, I will just take some of the opposite color, like if I'm doing yellow or warm, I'll just dip my brush into some of the blue and green and add it to the yellow. And that makes a really beautiful color that's not so bright and saturated. I would say right now these paintings are about in the middle phase and can see the composition starting to come together and I'm finding some colors that I like but still a far away from what I would consider my finished piece. 
I think I want to start refining this palette a little bit. It's a little bit all over the place. This quadrant right here is bothering me and I don't know why I might have to oh I like that red right there I might have to take a break but I think I need to really get in there with a bigger brush I just need to be a little courageous here because there we go starts to look like I'm hedging my bets and that's not what I want. I had to sacrifice um, a lot of the stuff that I liked because <clears throat> my composition was looking too piecemeal. And same with this, I'm hedging my bets and the problem is, is that the composition is suffering. And if this painting doesn't turn out, then oh well. <laughs> you can see, I can go back and work on it some more, or I can just put it aside and not worry about it. Because I don't care enough about each piece that it's gonna hurt me. I'm not gonna stay up nights thinking about it, that's for sure. There, I think that really helps. Even though I lost some of those really nice colors in there, this is just better. So yesterday when I left off, I was not feeling too great about the pieces. I often get in these pickles where I feel like the art is not going where the way I like it to go. And I made some pretty extreme measures to get the composition to where I wanted it. Um, and I sacrificed a lot of the nice colors and textures in the piece that I normally would like to save. But at this point, don't panic. Because if I've learned anything, it's that I can work through this. I can push through it. And I was going in cold and I wasn't really warmed up. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to just take 10-15 minutes, which will probably be a couple minutes for you because I'm going to edit this out, but I'm just going to warm up.
So if you run into this problem where you're feeling stuck, first of all, just take a break, walk away for an hour, a couple hours or overnight. And then there's a couple of ways to push through this. And one of the reasons that you don't wanna give up is because there's still hope for these pieces. Step away from the just straight painting and to move into a couple of other techniques. And some of those techniques are mark making. And I can also use stencils and some collage. And so let's try to bring some life back into these paintings. These are gonna add interesting layers that I didn't have before. And I'm already starting to like this a lot better. And I'll probably cover up most of this, but it'll peek through in the end. Now I'm gonna also add some marks. Just draw some lines through it just to help integrate that collage. Now, while that's drying, the piece that really needs work is this one. And now I'm gonna start painting again. Another reason not to worry <laughs> is that it's just paper and paint. And if I mess this up, I can just keep working on something else. This is a paintbrush tied to a stick. I'm sure you've seen that done many times. Something right there. Oh, you're gonna be over there, okay. Hi. <laughs> I think it's starting to look a little bit more interesting. It's starting to come together. I need to let it dry a little bit because it's very wet. Mm -hmm. 
the thing about warming up that's good is that it helps you get loose because I want to paint really loose. I want my stuff to look like a kid did it. When a child paints, it's not over analytical. There's not a lot of the left brain going into it. It's more of like a right brain thing. Sometimes when I'm working on them, I start to get very critical, self-critical, and that's really not a good place to be in. And I think that's a great time to step away, take a break, go on a walk, do something else so that your eyes and your brain are not constantly focused on your piece of art. And I actually like them better now when I come back and look at them, especially this big one here. But um, after my walk, I came back and what I did is I took photos of these and in my phone and I used my editing software just in iPhone photos and I just kind of did a little painting in there. On this one, I think there's a little too much going on and it's sort of confusing in this lower corner here. Um, I think there needs to be a little bit more push and pull of contrast, a little bit more value. And on this one, I think it's close to see if maybe a piece right here would be nice. Um, I added these three lines. I also brought in some more dark blue and was just playing with the composition a little bit. I added a little, this teal color. I also boosted the contrast by adding some white here. The problem is if I go in and do that too much, I'm gonna lose some of those interesting layers if I just cover over everything. But you know, I'm willing to go bold for the sake of the composition. And this one here, I did kind of the same thing and I was liking this bold blue right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that on this one. And I also boosted the contrast by adding, just scribbling in some white here. So basically I'm gonna try some of these things. And another thing I'm gonna do is I'll keep that on in front of me so that I can refer to it. Um, not religiously obviously but I also brought in some new tools and I have some of my marabou art crayons I might try some of these but I also might use these tempera paint sticks they have some really bright bold colors that this is the pastel one I might I don't think that blue is strong enough but um so I'm gonna try some of those so let's work on the smaller one first And these are water soluble, so I can take, go in and take a paintbrush. That's not strong enough. So I'm gonna go in with paint when that dries. Let me try these lines here in this green and see if that does anything. I don't wanna be too prescriptive, but I wanna get that interesting. I have this dark blue color. Extend this a little bit. This is a piece of collage that I added and you can see that line right there from the piece of paper and I really like that, how it peeks through on the artwork. It's just subtle. The nice thing about this stuff is you can kind of scrape it off. Um, because it's very waxy and if you don't like what you put down you can remove it and it adds a really nice texture too
I think part of the feeling of discouragement that happens when you're working too hard and diligently and you lose sight, that can really contribute to that feeling of wanting to give up. And so taking a break is so important. And also learning to see things in a way that somebody else would see them. That's less critical of you. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll imagine my friend coming over and looking at my piece and they're always, you know, they always see things differently than you do. And they're like, oh, I love this piece. It's so beautiful. Don't change it. And you're like, it's not done. Sometimes I try to think like another person would and that's a very objective way of looking at your work that will help you push through. And then what I like to do once I add something like this, take that color and make it lighter, darker, or a little bit a shade off a little bit different. Even just like a little something like this can be interesting. This one, the trouble piece that I'm having trouble with, I'm gonna add the blue paint. This crank pen never lets me down. I don't know why, it's just, it's always a beautiful result appearance I brought this white in here and I think that is really nice so let me try to I just realized is that it's cut almost in half and what I think I'll do is bring the pink down into it so that there's less blue. The smaller one, I added a little green to it. I was going through some of the color chips that I've made and I happened upon this spring green one and I placed it against the piece before I had this on here and I really liked it. So I thought the colors were very complimentary. So I mixed up this color, which I have the ingredients for on the chip. So a few tips I have for finishing. Um, Number one, take breaks. Make sure you walk away and get some perspective and clear your head. Also, take as long as you want on your paintings. They don't have to be done in a day. And in fact, they probably won't be done in a day. You can take as much time as you want. So don't rush them. And if you get stuck when you come back and you look at your piece and you don't know what to do, try some new techniques. Try collage and even if those pieces don't show up in the final piece, it'll help push you forward to the next phase of your painting. Try new materials. I have temper sticks I like to use. I have those marabou crayons that are water soluble. Try different types of brushes. I have calligraphy brushes. I have a fan brush. I have this long brush on a stick that I use so that I don't have as much control over it. 
Also, remember to be objective because when you start to get myopic and self-critical, you're gonna find yourself spiraling down into a hole. And this is a good time to walk away and take a break. And then when you come back, you can look at your piece and think of it as if your friend was looking at it. Another technique that might come in handy is computer software. I just use my iPhone to take a picture of it and then there's an editing feature in the Photos app where you can just draw in with your finger or a stylus. Sometimes that helps me push the value and composition in ways that I would be too afraid to do on the actual piece. Another thing you might wanna do is use color chips. Color chips will help you find a maybe more interesting color that you wanna add that you haven't thought of before and it does it with totally low risk.